The events industry has reportedly lost an estimated $15 billion of revenue in the first nine months of 2020. For the aerospace and aviation event organizers, there's been the double whammy of depression with events being stopped anyway, but a core market in disarray about whether it will survive the coronavirus that's attacked it. Well, we talked to major aerospace events organizers about the indicators for recovery, if indeed there's recovery at all. Yeah, I mean, we, we run 180 events in 19 different countries. And, you know, aerospace is one of our big sectors, but we're also in things like sort of medical. Um, and I mean, what we're seeing is, for example, China. China is, is operational. It's been operational since July. Uh, we've personally run seven shows uh, in the last seven weeks. And the big exhibition center in Shanghai uh, they've had 1.3 million visitors through their exhibition hall in that period. Every company association out there is going to start looking at their portfolios and start saying what will exist for the future, what events need to be out there. Right now, I'm very lucky. The MROs, as you know, is a series of events that we connect to keep the, com the community going in communications. So right now, none of my events have been affected, thank God. Uh, our first event will be held in person in Dubai in March of next year, subsequently followed by our Aero Engines in Dallas, and then MRO America is in Orlando, which we've been in talks with our partners, venues, et cetera, and we feel that we can pull it off smaller events, but we're going to do it. Uh, I think you know, the first half of next year might be a little bit more positive than maybe we had thought a month ago. So I think just small glimmers of hope in, in the big markets. But for us, the Middle East is our big market for the aerospace sector. And what we're, what we're beginning to see, which is a positive, is that, you know, Dubai is very much a regional market. And we're beginning to see the borders open up. And uh, the, the principal one that actually is really positive is Saudi. Uh, the Saudi border is opening up. Um, so I, I, I think that people want to get back to events in the Middle East because that's the culture uh, of going face to face. So physical aerospace events could restart soon, but will they be different? As time goes on, um, and people become more comfortable with things, then people will start to maybe change the way things look and feel. And, you know, I, th I think we've all done it within our workplaces that we've kind of started, you know, right up here and we might start to drop over time as we understand what works and what doesn't work. But, you know, you're always going to try and be as protective as you possibly can to, to start with. And, um, you know, those, th th those things will just evolve over time. I think there's a bunch of variables included in there, Alan. Yes, working with the venues and the states, et cetera, as to what they're allowing, number one. Number two, as you, as you said previously, our industry has been hit. We have a double whammy. So a lot of the companies that we wanted to be there or have been there before, budgetary-wise, et cetera, will not be joining us. We'll be looking at perhaps a hybrid model. And <clears throat> third, I also think that travel restrictions, whether it be by the person itself, the company, or again on whether or not they're lifted by, you know, the, the different countries. So it's, it's a bunch of factors that we are going to take into consideration and we're going to work with them uh, to the safety and well-being of all our customers. I don't know because uh, the Barista show is really a, a um, supply chain business show. So first of all, the, uh, the usual business that is done in such show like Farnborough or Paris will be the same. Uh, the difference is, is the future of aviation and, and, um, and the new aircraft that we have to build in the next 20 years. This will be uh, um, for sure uh, one of the focus of the, of the show uh, with Airbus announcing his, his three new planes and maybe uh, Boeing and the other one uh, coming through this uh, uh, new decarbonation uh, aviation. This is one of the main topics, but uh, uh, there is still a uh, thousand plans to build and, uh, and, uh, and the usual business will be still there. 
But during lockdown, there's been a challenge. The gap in events has been filled by virtual shows. The biggest of these being Farnborough Connect, replacing the Farnborough International Air Show. But do they work for the usual showgoers? And importantly, now they're here, will they continue? We believe it was a success, um, and the research will back that up. You know, we had over fourteen thousand uh, you know, registrations. You know, one of the one of the great things was we had over fifty percent of the people who attended from outside of the UK. It wasn't just a UK event; it was a worldwide event. You know, over two, nearly two hundred fifty speakers, nearly one hundred fifty participant companies. You know, it was, from my perspective, and, and from Farmer International perspective, a, a real success. And you know, we then did the research to say, well. OK, just because you believed it was, did your customers believe it was? Um, and, you know, over eight out of ten believe they met their objectives completely. You know, 86 percent, you know, which is a really staggering figure, said that they got something out of it they wouldn't have got had they not attended. And I'm not sure that you can say it was a replacement for the Farm Bar Air Show. Um, I, I, you know, at the time it kind of was. But I think if you look at it, which was sort of your first question is, will virtual events carry on? Um, I think that they will start to complement and, and move alongside face-to-face -face events. And, um, and, and that's what we're looking to do with Farmer Connect long term is, you know, we've created something there. You know, it's not, we don't want it to replace the Farm Bear Show, but we do believe that, you know, because they tend to be on two year show cycles, you can create something that then has, you know, a circle around it over that two years that allows you to, <clears throat> to utilize that virtual world. Some, even in our division, some have elected to go virtual for next year. They are very small, uh, intimate boutique conferences. So they elected to go virtual. Our, I think people are hungry to get back together. I think the big events and where possible that we can do them will happen slowly, carefully. I think a lot of organizations, associations in particular, will probably continue to go virtual. So I think it's going to be a mix of what will work for them, you know, versus what will work for other organizations. Well, let's say that for a, a conference and, and talks, uh, virtual is really a good tool. And uh, we've seen a lot of virtual conference uh, working um, from the beginning of this crisis. So. Uh, internet and and uh, and virtual is is really done for for conferences, for a show. Um, the the um, the aim of the show is 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 to is to feel is to touch is to is to meet the people. So I don't believe in virtual shows uh, at all. Uh, I mean full virtual shows. Um, virtual is a really good tool for all of us. Uh, and uh, for example, like today. And um, I think that uh, virtual is a good tool, but will never replace uh, uh, real shows. Well, we, we've run a lot of virtual events. I think the ones that have worked have been the ones that are content orientated, so the more sort of conference orientated. Um, and I think the positive there is that we've seen a lot of new people and people from different areas participate, which again, you know, growing that audience, I think is, is, is really important. That's been one of the pluses that's come out of it. I think the ones that have tried to effectively take the real world and put it virtual in terms of virtual, you know, trade booths and things like that, I think, you know, they've been around for some time. And to be honest, they haven't really worked well. Uh, and I think that a lot of customers haven't really seen the return on investment. Um, and I think we're beginning to see new models develop out of this, which I think will mean that some of these virtual events will remain because I think it's really important for content and spreading the message. But actually where it gets into commerce and networking, I think there's no way of actually replacing face to face. Virtual event organizers believe that you can do that business in that environment. It's, it's a like cold calling when you pick up the phone and cold calling in the old days that I remember. We are working very closely now after doing our first two virtual events and we're watching the numbers and the demographics, et cetera. And we're trying to educate our people into saying it, it's okay to raise your hand. 
you know, don't be shy, you know, just go out and you have X amount of networking opportunities, leads as they're called on virtual, go ahead and, and do it. And 2021 and beyond, who is going to be doing what? It's, it's like a war. We, we are waiting uh, the end of the war and uh, we are um, waiting that the um, research uh, that the medicine will find a solution to this uh, to this um, uh, virus crisis as soon as soon as it will be back from us uh, everything will be resolved but it's question of time is it in uh, three months six months uh, nobody knows for the moment I, I think the challenge is going to be the international component i think it will it will come back but it will be slower um, and that's certainly all the statistics that we're seeing um, globally that, you know, we're, we're talking probably, you know, 23 at the earliest, maybe 24 before we begin to see the level of traffic that we had last year. What's happened in the past six to eight months is not really going to be representative of what's going to happen for the next three, four, five years when we're all able to get out and about again, when, you know, when, when the restrictions are lifted. Well, the industry is ready to fight back, it seems, and also is looking at ways to keep its audiences and customers engaged. The show, as they say, must go on.